Many of you have been asking for the Photoshop Native M1 Performance Benchmark. Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. For those of you who have been following my channel, you will know that I have extensively benchmarked many of these photo apps running on Rosetta 2 and natively on the M1 processor. At this point in time, we have now reached peak M1 performance, meaning that we have now seen what these M1 computers can do. And if you want something more powerful, the best thing to do is to wait for the next generation Apple Silicon that's going to come out. The result that I'm going to share with you in Photoshop will pretty much prove the same thing that we have already seen the max for these computers in general. So let's quickly go over the test system that I've used to run all these tests. And I'm simplifying my M1 test library a little bit by just including two machines the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air M1. So the Mac Mini is the upgraded 8-core 8 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM. The MacBook Air is the 8-core 7 GPU and 8 gigabytes of memory. And just something to keep in mind is that on the Intel machine, starting with the laptop, the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2019 that has 32 gigabytes of memory, and on the Mac Pro that has 96 gigabytes of memory. And you're going to see that having more memory does benefit when you really start to deal with large files on the system. One more thing I want to mention about these M1 computers too, and part of the reason why I'm using these Simplify setup is that the processor inside these M1s for the most part are identical. We don't have to worry about getting a different performance in a portable laptop machine versus a desktop machine anymore. This is probably the very first time that this has really happened, that we don't have to really think about whether I'm getting a laptop for better portability but not getting the performance, or I'm getting the desktop for better performance but less portability. Pretty much that whole line has just been removed, and that's something really great about these new M1 processors. For the test that I'm going to do, I'm using Lloyd Chamber from Dick Lloyd website. You can check out his site. I'll leave a link in the description below too. He have come up with these Photoshop benchmarks that are pretty extensive and they're pretty much accurate. They test different aspects of the machine. And I like to use his test because it gives me a really consistent result and I don't have to press the start stop watch on my clock app because there's that introduced a lot of human errors into the equation. And I can run this test multiple times and the program, the simple script that he has, will always average the time that it takes for me. All right, let's have a look at results, starting out with Photoshop speed. This is pretty much just testing the speed of the processor. And this concludes what we have already seen with these M1 processor is that pretty much on a single core performance, they're pretty much beating out the Intel at this point. So they can do single core tasks much faster than Intel can. If you can, you can see them from the chart there. You will see that I also highlight the new test, the one in red there, so you can compare them. But you can see that on the Mac Mini M1 running on Rosetta 2, running on beta. So the beta one is pretty much a native app, but it was on beta. And you can see that on the M1 native itself on the Mac Mini, the, you know, the time between that and the beta, they're pretty much margin of error. Sometimes the actual app, the final version does take a little bit longer than the beta version. I'm not really sure why. I've run multiple tests on there, but many of these tests are, you know, fall within margin of error. So I'm going to say they're okay. But we can really see that the M1 MacBook Air does take longer when we do these tests because it has less RAM on the system. And also the processor itself doesn't have a fan to cool it down, but it, you know, so that's one of the things to think about there. I've run this test on two different Photoshop settings, 70% RAM and 90% RAM. We can see that on the MacBook Air M1, when we increase the RAM, and if you only have eight gigabytes, you're talking about going from about five gigabytes to about maybe a little bit over seven gigabytes or so, the system does perform better uh, by, you know, close to a second or so, but that's just something to keep in mind there. So here's the thing. If you are doing any pro tasks or using any pro apps and working with large files, just bring for the 16 gigabyte. It is definitely worth it. This is proven in so many of the tests, especially if you're using Adobe apps. The next test is Photoshop Medium. This is creating a file that is 15.7 gigabytes. At this point in time, you can see that the Intel machines, when you're dealing with files that are large, a machine with more memory is definitely of a benefit here because it takes a lot less time. And yes, even though that on the 70% comparing the Mac mini process, Rosetta, the beta and the native, there is a time improvement. You can see that on the 70% one, the MacBook Air just pretty much take a sweet time there. So MacBook Air is definitely not the computer for Pro to consider. I would consider going with a MacBook Pro instead because it has a fan and definitely again, bump it up to a 16 gigabytes of memory. Moving down to the 90% RAM increase, 
you can see that Rosetta 2 beta and also native on the Mac mini. The native app itself, the final version, does add some slight time improvement and, didn't, and it even didn't beat up Rosetta 2 um, in the performance. So that's something strange here. I've ran so many tests on this, restart the machine numerous times. The results are pretty much the same. So I find that very interesting there. But again, they're in, in about a second or two of each other. And I would probably say that is margin of error. And you can see that for some reason on these M1 processor, it takes longer when I bump up the RAM when we're doing with a larger file. <clears throat> and the last test that I have is Photoshop Huge 56 gigabyte. You will see in this test clearly that the current Intel machine, the Mac Pro, the MacBook Pro, because it has more memory, it pretty much still beats out the M1 at this point. So it really just depends on what you're looking at, what you're looking to do. This is not really a clear winner on all the tasks yet, which is one of the things that I really was hoping for Apple Silicon to do, and I'm sure that they will do that in the future. But as of now, it's not really a clear winner in everything yet. But if we just take a look at the Mac Mini, the three charts in the middle there, Rosetta 2, M1 Beta, and M1 Native, there is a big time improvement when we're dealing with this huge file. And the MacBook Air running M1 Native, this is pretty much setting it at 90% RAM. Because it doesn't have a lot of RAM to use, it took a very long time to even process the files. So RAM is definitely important, and I would probably go with the MacBook Pro, the 13-inch one, if you're doing pro tasks. If not, just go with a Mac Mini because it's probably the best machine that you can use out there right now. So pretty much that's the recap of the Photoshop test. I hope that you gained some insight from here. This is pretty much just an addendum from the test that I've done a few months back. And I know that many of you have been requesting that I do this Photoshop benchmark just for comparison. Let me put it this way. If I would have thrown in the 24 inch iMac M1, the result will probably be really close to the Mac mini that I have here. This is the reason why I didn't really throw it into the equation. So anyway, I hope you find this helpful. Questions or comment below, give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art We Trust.